I'll let you know that. Um, but we're going to be moving on. Yeah. Out of this game scene here, we're going to be going into top eight for Street Fighter V. Yeah, I will be Street stepping off because I don't happen to know anything about that game. But I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to Dragon Ball Fighters. Keep tuning in for Street Fighter V. And, of course, show some love to Combat Network. And if you want to, show some love to me. Follow yeah, yeah, yeah. me at FP underscore yeah, Ajax. Definitely follow uh, Ajax. That guy is, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the guy personally, but I heard he's a funny guy I hear he's on a, Twitter. I hear he's a no, no, I, I hear he's a funny he's a, guy on he's Twitter. He's a terrible person. I'm just kidding. I, I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate you, Paul. I appreciate of you, course, fam. Absolutely. And uh, I'm going to get me some food. Please keep continuing to tune in here, Top 8 for Street Fighter V. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Ham Bam straight out of third place for Dragon Ball Fighters. Is that with KO? Are you staying? Yes. yes you and we are going to have Twitter's own Draken. Shout outs to Draken. What's if up, you guys yo? didn't know about Draken, please go follow his Twitch. You guys might see some nice Topanga style Street Fighter V action, just like last night, right, Draken? Yeah, we also have a nice um, like round robin go? tournament with a lot of boss go? players. Um, uh, okay. Bunch I of first to seven Topanga I style. Go. It's a lot of fun. I got to go. You got to go? Yeah. All right, have a good night, KO. You too, Draken. We'll see you later. <laughs> All right, monsters. We'll find another commentator because I don't want to hold it down by myself, yeah. even though I love y'all. So. Hey, Daniel, you want to commentate with me? KDZ? Alright. Cool, sounds good. Phil! Oh. Have a good night. Cool. Alright, well, shout outs to KDZ for winning Dragon Ball Z. Good stuff to him. Got a nice pot bonus too, $500, I believe. Um, I didn't even know he played Street Fighter, but I'm sure the commentary will be fine. You! You need to know better people so you can get these things. You should be body over there. But yeah, my name is Draken. Um, my Twitter is at Draken Dubose. So I share a lot of it's Street Fighter like V tech. Me. I pretty much only play this. Street Fighter. I do want to play Dragon Ball Z at some point. But not yet. Not yet. Maybe one day. Wow. <sighs> KDZ. Hey, congrats. Thank you. Good stuff. 3-0. free -o, you know. Yeah, it wasn't free. No, that <laughs> no was it wasn't free. Um, it's a lot of uh, Vegeta having to do a lot of work at the end. Yeah, I mean, that's... How Dragon Ball Z works so early on in the lifespan, though. Yeah. Like, Vegeta is an excellent crutch, an excellent character. It makes life a lot easier for you. Yeah. So, good stuff. Light's definitely a good contender, though. He brought it all the way back from losers. Yes, he did. Uh, to get in the grand finals. So, like, I mean, even though it was 3-0, it wasn't 3-0. It was good. It was good. Uh, but, not, but enough about that. You play Street Fighter? Uh, I did until season 3. Got you. Why not? Uh, because Cause Dragon Ball? Uh, uh, Tekken and Dragon Ball came out. Tekken and Dragon Ball. I love Ooh. Tekken. Yeah. I, I feel like Tekken's like a thinking man game. Like, if I wanted to dedicate my life, to a fighting game, I dedicate my life to Tekken. Tekken okay. 7. But for now, Street Fighter. Like, Street Fighter. I, I didn't enjoy as all the other Tekkens as much as I did Tekken 7. Tekken yeah. 7 was so Why? fun. Uh, I, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe okay. hey, whenever I'm playing Tekken 7, I feel like nothing unfair happened to me. Anything that happened yeah. to me was clearly my fault. Okay. But I didn't feel that way in Tekken 5. I didn't okay. feel that way in Tekken 4, okay. especially Tekken 4. Yep. I mean, like, there, there were things that were just repeatable and abusable. Right. And they did a very good job with this game of, of preventing that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. It's good to hear. Um, so we're going to have an all New England top eight. Last year, we did have a couple other contenders from outside of New England. From New York specifically, we had Diamond and Smug. This year, it's going to be all New England. And no, Noel first didn't make it? Huh? Noel didn't make it? Noel did not make top eight. Okay. No. So we did have some people from outside New England in the bracket, but not making top eight. Okay. Um, so the first two players are going to be Ham, Bam, and Up to Snuff. They've actually not played since season one, even though uh, – played each other since season one, um, even though they're both some of New England's finest. Is this uh, – They just don't hit, hit each other in tournament very often. That's uh, Up to Snuff, right? Yeah, Up to Snuff on the right. Yeah, um, he's the one who got second last year against uh, – he beat everybody except for Smug. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so he got second last year. He got top eight at Red Bull last year in Boston. As well, he got top 64 at Evo last year with his Nikali, yeah. uh, knocking out Mago and Losers. Um, very, very strong Nikali player. Still sticking with Nikali in Season 3 despite Nikali's nerfs. Yeah. Um, and Daniel, so Ham Bam, also playing Balrog despite Balrog's nerfs in Season 3. He will be ch changing to Rashid, a different top tier, um, right after this tournament. But Rashid. for now, Balrog sticking with the tried and true. Yeah. Okay. So, so I want to see how this, this plays out. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if uh, Up to Snuff uses the V Trigger 2. That will change a lot of his OP options, yeah, especially we'll in the corner. Um, Is I mean, that the one with the fireball? Yeah. I honestly forget. Yes, he does use that one. Yeah, because so mm -hmm. there's there's almost no reason not to use it because the only difference between one and two is that versus that new move they had to give one that nobody uses. That uh, right, the yeah. overhead ground pound. Yeah. Not actually overhead. But so there's no reason to not go to two. You right. have all the same stats. Thanks. Yeah. You have all the same stats. You have all the same. It's uh, still the setups. infinite V Trigger. 
Yep. Um, you just you get a fireball, which is really nice. Like it's it has long recovery, but it controls space in front of you just like Laura's fireball. Yeah. Um, and like you said, good for Oki. Changes his Oki options. It's not really a big game changer, but it's a nice addition. It's just like in season two, they gave him a charged overhead. They yeah. just keep like adding extra things to Nicole's V trigger. Even though I feel like his V trigger already makes him one of the best characters in the game once he gets the activation. Yes, but they they yeah. have been like pulling back on some of the uh, the frames and of the course. Say so, again. So tag is Draken, D-R-A-K-E-N. I'm Twitter is at Draken Dubose. I'm Yumke Shock. Twitter is uh, K K. B <laughs> Combat <laughs> Contestants <laughs> Bureau. Ooh. So KKB con uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out a way to have a uh, a tag that is KKK and have it be not as obvious. You will never be able to pull that <laughs> off. I, I mean, don't care who you are. I mean I had uh, I had the tag body by Christ in other in other games. Okay. Body, body, I mean, so you can what, say, Yo, so that, that shit is godlike. Like, you'd be like, what does your tag mean right now? Uh, KDZ? KDZ, yeah. Uh, it's Kid Disaster. I made it when Kid I was much, disaster. much younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were actually, me and Steve were talking about how all of your tags. What? At Drake Dubose, D R A K E N D U B O S E. So all your sponsors plus your tag, it's all letters and numbers. Yep. That's literally I, it. I, I like to sometimes put my tag in between or in front so yeah. people don't know where I am, I'm at. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure of the use of that, but great. Good stuff. Look, when I started playing fighting games uh, Perfect. 12 years ago, the three-letter tags were much more popular than they are now. Oh, thanks. Uh, Just put that away. Don't, don't show the stream. No, no. It's too oh. late. Oh, now I can look. The stream monster's going to figure out how to get in those pockets of yours. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. see Hand Bam's Balrog, V Trigger 1. Um, definitely better than V Trigger 2 in this matchup. I guess up to snuffs, like you said, V Trigger 2. So, eruption of power with that fireball. Yep. And there's no reason to use uh, Balrog's V Trigger 2. Not at all. That shit is. Uh... In Season 1, Hand Bam played Nash, and that, like I said, was the last time they played. So, yeah. we're gonna see how up to snuff approaches Hand Bam. Hand Bam is a very defensive wall player. It's very hard to get in on him. His delay timings are very interesting, hard to get around. If you're trying to get a counter hit on him, it's gonna be very difficult. If you're gonna try to throw him, he's probably gonna end up throw teching you. He's gonna guess right on defense very often. The thing is, up to snuff, the defense is also immaculate. So he, he needs to get in on Ham Bam, and if he can make it work, Nikali is very good on offense. We'll, we'll, have the offense. we'll, we'll see what happened in the last year with his ability to uh, to defend in his Balrog. Right. Because when he's playing Smug, Smug was finding a lot of times, I guess maybe scared him in the in the neutral. Yeah. But he, he found a lot of times to get crush counters. Right. Very true. Very true. The issue is Balrog's crush counter is a lot worse in Season 3. So the standing high kick, of course, not as good combos in Season 3. Can't get as much damage, can't get as good Oki. So it's not really as abusable, even though it's still plus three on block. Okay, I see that still pushes all the way to the corner. Oh yeah, of course. That's I don't know. I don't know if they changed that. Speed trigger one. Oh, okay, but. excellent jump. That's and super. Very nice. Perfect jump. Ham Bam was looking for the dash low. Confirm into V trigger one. More dash punches. Yeah. Into death. Um, but I've just not sniffed it out. And that was the third time in that round of the snuff. Did a neutral jump. Uh, in, like, did a neutral jump in neutral. Right. Trying to catch a, a, an errant uh, dash punch. Exactly. Ham Bam not really known for his anti-air DPs. If he sees you neutral jump, it's very rare you'll ever see him actually anti-air. He got caught by a, a clean oh, own combo drop. drop. Unlikely that was an American reset. There you go. Anti-airs. Okay. Wow. Didn't allow him to, yeah. Activation. Full screen corner carry. What's the mix-up? Okay, low. Counter hit. Up to stop mashing there. And one more button. Yep, Excellent. and he's dead. Not quite. Did he pull him out of the corner on purpose? Oh, so he did that to make the combo easier. Oh, wow, that wake up jab. Good stuff from up to snuff. I don't know if he needed to spend all of that meter for death, but it's worth it just to make sure. Um, the reason that Ham Bam jumped into the corner was he wanted the full combo and as much harder to drop if you start the combo from the corner. Okay. You'll, but you'll it wasn't going to kill. It wasn't going to kill, though. But that means that he gave up his Oki afterwards. His yeah, very, exactly. very easily timed Oki. Which is an issue. Um, the thing is, he still had the knockdown. He still could have needed up to snuff on wake up, but up to snuff had the jab, the three frame. And it was perfect. So 
I mean, Daniel just drops his meaty. That's it. He still got the knockdown. He just okay. timed it. He still would have got the exact same knockdown if Nikali was in the corner. So technically, he gave up corner, but it wasn't a big deal. That wasn't the reason he won. Okay. He just missed time. Exactly. Missed and that neutral jump again. No conversion, but that's okay. Oh, trade. Yeah. No trade combo, but you'll take it. Nikali's still in the corner. Oh, wow. Okay. I would like to see uh, Hambam start... Uh, Basically, if up the stump is going to keep neutral jumping, maybe do the uh, the upward Exactly. Punch. He should be DPing up the stump neutral jumps. Well, that, that's actually one thing that, that Smug was doing. That was a big deal. Exactly. He wasn't able to just jump like that. And that didn't change the season. You can still do that. It's just something Ham Bam isn't used to. Excellent anti-air, though. Crouching oh, fear is that very was nice. risky. Risky jump? choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, a trade there would have killed Nikali, or up the stump as well. Okay. Good counter hit. That's one of the nerfs that they did in the in Ooh. season three, where he he goes Damn. further back after you block a standing medium kick with uh, Nikali. His standing medium kick pushes back a little further. And now. season two? Yeah, oh, oh, season, three. Oh, season three. three. oh, I didn't know that. Yes. So he, it's not as easy for him to walk forward to do medium, medium, medium. Ah, okay, so okay. he only gets like two reps of it. Just be yeah. patient. Just wait. Of course. Like before, before you could be oppressed by four or five of those. Right. But now that's not possible. So yeah. you, you have to get rid of your uh, your fear from the previous season. Yeah. Do. And hand bam, somebody who presses buttons a lot. Like I said, it's usually delayed timing, so he's not necessarily mashing. Yeah. But what up to stop is doing is catching those delayed timings with counter hits. So you saw the standing medium kick crouching uh, medium punch conversion earlier, and then you saw the full conversion to super catching hand bam's delayed timings. And hand bam, like I said, his delay timings are kind of interesting, usually hard to hit. But up to stop's very good at figuring out when to hit the opponent's delay timings. And that's really the mark of a good player in Street Fighter V. Figuring out your opponent's delay timing. Everybody has a different kind of timing. Yeah. You always need to change up your offense according to your opponent. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's, uh, that's fighting games, baby. Yeah, that is fighting games. All right, so we're being pushed right back to the middle of the screen. Yeah. Ham Bam did a lot of work there to push him to the corner without hitting him too right. often. And Up to Snuff has been able to get out of the corner pretty consistently. And it is, of course, um, I, I'm not sure if it's three out of five. We'll check. But. So I've been seeing a lot of uh, Ham Bam's Oki failing. Yes. Like, up to snuff is, is just doing his three frame jab and it's just working. Right. Which is really bad. Um, if you can't get any offense going on Nikali, you're going to lose in footsies more than likely. And if you're not anti airing, you're just dead. That's yes. it. So if you, if you noticed, um, he every single time has only done two medium kicks when, right. he, when he's doing his, uh, his right. pressure. Because if he does one more, the medium kick crouching medium punch isn't going to work anymore. Right. The, the, like the uh, stomp of whip. That makes sense. I think the only thing you'd be able to get there is a standing medium kick counter hit and yeah. a crouching medium kick. And that's a little bit scary as well. Um, Ham Bam likes to press buttons. He might just catch you in the middle of that string anyway. Yeah. So it makes sense. One second. Yeah, go for it. How y'all doing in chat? Let me know. But we'll see who we have next up. I'm going to bring up chat, actually. That was a quick match. Two out of three. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. I'm surprised these are two out of three sets, actually. I was hoping it'd be three out of five, but that's all good. I always feel like Street Fighter Five should be three out of five sets, honestly. It's fast like Tekken. And very 50-50 driven in a lot of cases. Okay, so we have Burkish versus Alex Smith, another uh, Nor'eastern matchup. Oh, yeah. Nor'eastern matchup. A little bit of a storm between these two. They've been playing since Season 1. Both of them played Karen Season 1. Um, but now Alex plays both Karen and Jury. Yes. <laughs> However, Burkish picked up Rashid just a couple weeks ago. Was one of the ha Has been one of the best players um, in any FGC, so New England FGC, for a couple years now. Um, just because he picked up Rashid like a couple weeks ago yeah. doesn't mean that he won't be able to beat almost everybody here. What did he used to play? He used to play Yurian. So in Season 1, he played Karen, switched to Yurian. Season 2, he was Yurian all the way. Won NEC last December, which is just uh, a big E major. And then switched to Rashid beginning of Season uh, 3, which honestly more like three weeks ago. He did play Yurian earlier this year at Winter Brawl and placed ninth. There. Okay. Very strong player. Doesn't, like I said, matter that he picked up a new character. He adapts incredibly quickly. This is going to be a short set, two out of three. So we'll see how he does um, in a short set. But his thought process on offense, very quick. Very hard to deal with. Always switches up his options. And on defense, 
also very frenetic. Switches up between a wake up jab, throw, back dash, jump back. Just hard to deal with. Just an excellent player overall. So he's he's willing to take a risk instead of uh, defending safely in order to to a lot of times, yeah. give you a lot to look at. Yeah, yeah. Um, he'll also exdp on wake up as well. He is willing to do pretty much anything on defense. It makes it very hard to pin him down. And we just see a lot of movement in neutral. Um, just waiting for Alex Smith to whip something like that sweep. Excellent whip punish with the uh, light punch. He tornado. is using V-Trigger too, one of the best new V-Triggers in this entire oh game. Oh yeah, two bars? Why is it two bars? Who knows? But it's, it's so good. The, the things it can do. Yep. See, one thing Alex Smith has always been good at is it's very difficult to time uh, Oki throws without like a setup. Right. Because the first two frames of standing up in, in Street Fighter V, you cannot be thrown. Yeah. So that means that if somebody wakes up with a jab, you can't be thrown until the, the very first frame that the jab would touch you. Right. So it's, it's, it's tough to just manually time it. But Alex has always been great at doing that. Just random knockdowns, just being able to walk up and throw you right. even if you're jabbing. And it is a lot easier in Season 3. They actually buff throws universally, so it, had one, so it has one more active frame. Okay. So it just makes it easier, even easier for Alex. Which is really nice. But he has to hold all of his pressure. Excellent overhead from Burkish. Like I said, likes to switch it up on offense. He was using that whirlwind to stay in, and then just goes for the cheeky overhead for the kill. I do wonder why they did that for uh, for Street Fighter Five because Street Fighter Four didn't have that. Street Fighter Three doesn't have that. You could, where, oh yeah, you can meaty throw in Street Fighter Four. Yep. And this game, not so much. Yeah, it, you can meaty throw. You just have to do it on the third frame of their getup, right. which is like insane. Which is why I like how they buff throws universally. And you saw that Burkish was actually trying to whiff punish Alex's standing medium kick yeah. after Burkish's unsafe tornado. Ooh, Didn't good work out. Punish. Alex's footsies are just so strong. Yes. Uh, you have to really figure out his whiff timings and punish accordingly. Okay. So a lot of people who used to play Karen have uh, somewhat abandoned her. Yep, yep. Season 3, she did get some nerfs. Um, and it seems oh. like almost everybody abandoned her. No punish, unfortunately. I mean, there are a lot of characters now that do her job better than her. Yeah, it feels like it. Definitely feels like it. Okay. Goes into super. Yeah. Both of them. Only oh, he missed. Oh no, the drop. But, but no he didn't punish. quick. He didn't quick get up. And, and if he, he did quick rise, would have been a free punish. Would have been death. Yeah, the break Big drop from Alex. Sometimes when you see a combo happening. You, you're tempted to just, you know, mentally check out for a few seconds, right. think about what to do next. But you have to always be present, always be in the moment, because you don't know if he's going to drop that. Yeah. You have to assume yeah. that maybe even if it's just, one out of 100. Just mash wake up. Just mash wake up. Because what if they do combo drop? Yeah. Just, just do it. Might as well. Is this uh, is it jury time? Oh, it might be jury time. Uh, did you know you were supposed to wake up with uh, Quick Rise? Yeah, Alex should try to wake up, of course. I mean, he's a, he's a veteran player. He knows to do that. Oh, I was just making fun of him. But, yeah, make fun of Alex all you want. That's great. Yep, back to Jerry. Um, this is a matchup you see all the time with Infiltration versus all of the Rashids from the East. <laughs> infiltration does extremely well against Rashids. I think he's he, he has a very positive win rate against Rashid. Probably because he also plays Rashid. Oh, yeah, he, he did play Rashid in... Uh, the beta, and he's also just tried him throughout the years. Yeah, he's, he's he, he knows Rashid very well. Yeah, he, he was running Rashid uh, last Evo. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, as just kind of a pocket character, yeah. he knows characters in and out. And I think Dre can play this matchup pretty well. Her footsies aren't that bad. It's just that her conversions aren't the greatest, and her offense isn't the greatest. But her standing medium kick got buffed. Uh, season three, it's a lot better now. You can cancel it. Um, at on one get time periods now, so like later as the normal comes out. It's just a very strong button. Her beat trigger is also really good now. Yeah, it's nicer now. It did get buffed. Like that's plus now. That didn't used to be plus. Oh. Oh Jesus. Nice combo. Not quite dead, but close. Wow, counter hit. Meaty. Standing medium punch, very strong. I wonder if that was a standing jab. Round two. Or standing light kick in uh, Rashid's case. Yeah. Yeah, Street Fighter 4 Jury was a lot of fun. Uh, I think she's pretty cool in this game though. I'm a fan. I wish they gave her all of her charges at the beginning of the round or something like that, but it's okay. It's okay. She's good in certain matchups. So what, it'll be like a con where he's oiled up in the like last version? He's oiled yeah. up on the, the match charts? Yep. Exactly. That's, I think that's how it should be for Jury. Night night. He's okay. getting real close. Negative two. Also minus two, but Alex didn't want to commit to anything yes. because Rekish might have ESDP'd. You know, it's kind of a 50-50. Even though you're minus, it doesn't matter. ESDP. Good conversion. Oh, no conversion there, but that's okay. Nice. Alex still in the corner. That's a counter hit. Not quite dead. Overhead. I don't know why he got greedy. 
he might lose to this. No, no, no he gets okay. medium. I agree with the green Um You already have another game to work with as well. Try to figure out this matchup. It's not like Berkus has ever played a jury before with his Rashid. I'm pretty certain he literally never has. So you'd have to learn this matchup on the fly. He has an extra game to work with. And I think Berkus is just a competent player in general. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. That's minus, minus four. Oh, no. Combo. Oh, he got hit. Oh, that could yeah. have been a bigger combo, but it's good enough. Stay in the corner. Oh, oh. Shimmy, you're dead. Oh, maybe. He might not die. We'll he might not die. Da, da, da. EX? Yeah, it's, it's not, not dead. It's real close. EX DP? Oh, my Buck God. Oh. Why are you teching? Why are you teching? Because he all walked forward at the start. Berkish punished his tech so often. Berk is showing why he's an uh, extremely strong player up extremely here. Extremely strong. He just started playing Rashid two or three weeks ago. Yeah. You know? Well, Rashid is not the uh, the most complicated character. No. So he's, he's, he's pretty easy. Outside of each trigger too, he's pretty easy character. So, so he was able to transfer his skills, his talents, to, to a new character? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's so hard to guess what Berk is going to do at any point. Well. And Rashid lends to that style extremely well. Even more so than Yurian did last season. Okay. Is Yurian nerfed this season? Yeah, he got nerfed quite bad. Uh, pretty bad. One of the things was like the V-Trigger universal nerf. So it does more scaling on hit for the initial V-Trigger activation, okay. which means that Yurian gets less damage on V-Trigger activation for oh. the initial one. Uh, okay. In addition, Yurian is just, I don't know. He's not as good as a result. I don't know. When I watch... They, uh, they nerfed his Coral Punch as well. When I watch, uh, what's his name play him? It's still disgusting. Nemo? Yeah. Because Nemo's disgusting. Oh, that's what it is. Of course. The person Not saying that Burkish isn't, but nobody's Nemo. Nobody's Nemo. Except for Nemo, of course. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes he is. I mean, you just watch Nemo work magic with that crouching high punch, and you feel like it's the best anti-air in the game. Uh, some of the damage I've seen is just it's gross. It's absolutely insane. I remember when, uh, what's his name, uh, it was Itabashi jumped at him and just did a raw activation on of his, course. his uh his V trigger the and then classic don't it jump. was just some some wild forty percent combo that yeah. killed him that yep. just uh, air he, he did a, a mirror and he dashed forward did another mirror yep. and he's just bouncing him off of them and oh god it's lovely I don't want to think about that. I love watching Yurian. I do wish that Berkish stuck with Yurian a little bit just for more character diversity in New England because I play Rashid. Ham Bam's gonna play Rashid, and then Burkish is gonna play Rashid. So it's gonna be. <laughs> How much should KDZ win? Good amount. 50%? Wait, 50%? Uh, okay, okay. That's pretty good. But how y'all doing in stream chat? Deathmaster, I see you. What's up, y'all? I was talking about Dragon Ball. They did the top. They did the top oh, they yeah, yeah. no. All right, so it's gonna be Doug versus so Cheeseburger versus Billy Batstone. It's gonna be Mika versus Abigail. A uh, it's a matchup that you've probably seen before, like uh, El Chocolate Toy, I believe his name is, versus Redman. That's my baby cool girl. Kid. I love Mika. I, I, my favorite character in I this game. I love Mika. She's so cool, and I love watching. Uh, what's his name play Mika? Friggin Fudo? Yes. Fudo. Like he just ma he makes it seem like the character has strong footsies, and I know it's a lie. <laughs> that character should not be able to outfootsie some of the players he outfootsies right? with her. Well, one character oh, really can't outfootsie is Abigail. You just uh, can't you do it. His range is just too long. You're not gonna be able to get through anything. But you want to bet? <laughs> hey, that's a jump in. That's a jump in. If Bastone isn't gonna react to standing high kick, then he's gonna have a hard time. Cheeseburger needs to punish that dash punch with a uh, EX Peach, though. He's not going to really get anything else except very close range. I don't know if this is a matchup he's played too much. Up to Snuff actually plays Abigail uh, just on the side, so he's probably ran it a little bit. Okay, should be relatively familiar, but not with the matchup against Badstone. I don't think they've played very often. Okay. Good back dash. And Mika still has a chance to recover here. Crouching high punch? Yep. Trigger. Oh, wow. Excellent beer reversal. Yeah, okay, so as an Armika player. Oh, Ooh. Jesus Christ. Okay. No, we should have pulled him back, back in the corner. Oh, oh no, minus two. Don't press the slow button after that, please. Could have dashed forward, standing medium, back medium. Yep. Put him back in the corner, yep. giving himself a better shot. But I don't understand why Abigail's allowed to exist in the form that he's in. <laughs> they, they didn't allow Zangief to be like this, specifically. They did their hardest to not let him be like this. I don't know. And then with Abigail, they're like, eh, let's give it a shot. Capcom just loves Abigail. That's all I've got to say. I don't know why they have issues with other grapplers in this game. 
But they saw Abigail and they're like, we love him. Give him everything he they, ever needs. They refuse to let Alex be a thing. Oh, Alex should be removed from the game. I'm just letting y'all know in stream chat. Remove Alex from the game. He's completely worthless. Um, gunfight, I know you posted on Twitter a poll. Should I play Alex anymore? No, you shouldn't play Alex anymore. He's trash. He will always be trash. I'm sorry. Capcom hates him. Capcom, he wasn't even good in third strike. You know? So, he's Baz very scared right now. Yeah, very scared. Um, who wouldn't be scared? You know? Excellent anti air. I bet Fudo would be scared. <laughs> Fudo would not be scared. I think Fudo would be the only Mika in the world who wouldn't be scared. Fudo Other than Top Button. Would be, see, Fudo's strategy against, because he plays Hitabashi all the time. Yeah. Hitabashi's the one who brought him into the scene, into yeah. the fighting game scene in general. Um, but because he plays him all the time, he has a good handle on, on Zangief. And what he does is he stocks up his meter and makes it so that he can't press certain buttons because he'll whip punish right. with uh, EX. EX, uh, EX Peach. Yeah, EX Peach is only five frames. It's one yes. of the fastest special moves in the game. It goes so far, they actually buffed it season three. Its range is even further than it was in season two. Well, okay. oh, that, no that was an EX Peach. Yeah, you could have done that. Too. But, yeah, so a, a character like this with huge buttons that are slow, I'm pretty sure you could do this. Same thing. He's going to pull him out of the corner. Oh, no. Oh, no. The thing is, Fast Zone's out again. Cheeseburger needs better punishes. He needs to keep on Abigail at all times, but it's just not going to happen. He's almost dead. He's not dead. Yeah. Very close. Oh, no. Oh, oh he up. got gimmicks. That was the fastest set I've seen in a while. Four rounds. Oh, my. Jeez. Abigail wins. Ugh. Well, that's Abigail. Damn it, Cheeseburger. That's also Badstone. Badstone is a very strong player. Um, it's been around for a while, too. He also played Nash season one. Ball Rock Season 2, just like Cam Bam. Okay. But then switch to Abigail. Oh, yeah. Abigail. The Abigail Army. The Abigail Army, exactly. There are actually a lot of Abigails here today. That's not obviously the best Abigail here. Um, but I'm not surprised. Is he the only Storm Abigail Kubo? in huh? Top 8? Yeah, he's the only Abigail in Top 8. Not everybody in Top 8 are Abigails. Don't worry about that, y'all. It's actually pretty high character diversity. I think every player, except for Nail Bomb and Ham Bam, are playing different characters. So Nail Bomb, uh, Nail Bomb who's coming up now, and Ham Bam both play Ball Rock. Everybody else is playing a different character. So you're going to see Nail Bomb, Balrog versus Nunchez, Birdie coming up. Right back. Uh, both them, new players, younger players. Nail Bomb only 19, Nunchez only 20. Both hailing from Boston. They come to the Boston Balance Patch weekly, every single week to grind it out with some of the best players in New England. So they're definitely on the come up. Uh, most of New England's players are actually relatively young as well, like early 20s. That's nice to see. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to see the, the youth. The getting into the, the, I mean, it's it's hard to get them to stay. Yeah, of course. Like especially with uh, the advent of how good online play is, yeah, like, things like that. Oh, not a street fighter, not a street fighter. Still better than, <laughs> still better than it used to be. Yeah, very true. Um, and it's still good enough to make people stay at home instead of going to their locals. Right. Like, yeah. It's it's easier to get validation online where like if you lose nobody saw it and if you win like right. you feel good. Yeah. There's a joke about my friend group is see you online. Instead of going to the weekly, or going to the weekly? No, see you online. God damn it. <laughs> Well, I, I've been adamantly against online because I, I host, like, locals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but with Dragon Ball, I'm sitting at home, and I just I feel the itch. I just feel the – and I'm, I'm like, I just got to get one more match. Yeah. Just one more match. I hate I'm that, just, I'm too. Just, I'm just pop online in. Because I hate online. I get so mad, but I still have to play one more. And, and it's like, if I win, well, I'm going to keep winning, so I got to keep playing. But, but if I lose, I got one more. I got to get that win. I've definitely played at least 1,700 matches online yeah. since the game came out. So now I'm like – for Dragon just, Ball? Yeah. I'm not surprised. Sure. I'm just... I mean, you're strong. You, I'm just, you gotta get that grind in. <sighs> I mean, I've been a successful player in many games without having on... Like, without grinding online. It's... But this game just... I just want one more. I just right. want... I, what, I, I'll, I'll have a session on Monday from 6 to 12, mm. and then I'll go home and I'll play for another couple hours. Yeah. It's just... It's horrible. You gotta I, get that sleep, too. Go sleep? Oh, yeah. What am so I talking dream about? about Dragon Ball? I don't know what... <laughs> All right, so tell me about Nail Bomb and, and uh, Nunches. I don't think they really have a history. Nail Bomb, um, very passive player, kind of like a wall, but generally likes to play a lot of footsies. But against Birdie, I think that's going to be very difficult for him to do. But yeah, he's got longer buttons, so. Yeah, Nunches is just going to keep pressing heavies until Nail Bomb demonstrates he can do anything about it. Like, Birdie standing high kick is a crush counter. Zero on block, very strong button. That's a good punish. Oh, it's only minus two, but good enough. So, one thing that. that 
should be happening in this matchup is he shouldn't be able to do dash punches willy nilly because of the, the range on the crouching jab of uh, Birdie. He should be able to at least touch him every time. Yeah, every time. I don't know if you get a full conversion. No, but you should always be able to touch him. Yeah. But oh, that, that adds up. Punches. Yeah. That adds up like if, if you keep dash punching and he keeps clipping you, right. that'll, that'll be a 50, 100, exactly. 150, 200. Yeah. And Nunchez, known the as what? the blowhole. Using that EX Dolphin Dive, but not quite killing Nail Bomb. Did they lower the damage of that because I don't know. I didn't think so, but maybe they did because I was very surprised that he lived too. So I don't know why Nail Bomb hasn't used any of his V-Trigger. I don't know what he's doing. I'm pretty sure most of that V-Trigger time has been just... Oh my it, god. It's slowly draining. Yeah, it is. So Nail Bomb demonstrating that I had the wrong assessment of him. He was just dash punching all over the place. And it was just wrong. Oh, it's because Birdie's not touching him. He's not touching him, true. And the thing is with Birdie, if he command grabs you, the dash up afterwards is fake too. But good conversion from Nail Bomb there. It was, but was it worth it? He got two we'll jabs see. in, which really uh, scaled the combo. Right. And Nail Bomb has a habit of going for that V skill cancel from normals. Nuncha is punishing accordingly, getting the back throw. Good anti air. Oh, wow. Full we'll punish? Yep. Good and conversion. Corner. Nobody wants a quick ride today. 50 50. Oh, that, no. He should not have been able to press a button there. Oh, my God. And that's done. The oh, blowhole. Nunchez. Are you saying it because he looks like Free Willy? Because it's like Free Willy, exactly. Alright. These are some quick matches so far. I, I don't know if Nailbomb will be able to make the adjustment. He is a relatively new player. Um, I think he started playing this past year, just like Nunchez. So he doesn't really have the experience to understand how to adapt to a kind of play style that he's not used to. Mm. Especially if like you go for a lot of unsafe stuff like constant dash punches that are just getting crush countered or canceled in a V-Skill that are just getting thrown. You need to calm down, try to whiff punish, and keep your pressure without doing the fake stuff. Try to just press some buttons, catch some counter hits. If you watch how a hand band plays, like I said earlier, it's a lot of delay buttons, a lot of... Um, Trying to catch the opponent overreaching, overextending, and then punishing. It feels like uh, defense is taking a backseat right now to yeah. to uh, offense. Like nobody wants to block. Exactly. Like every time uh, Nelbaum has blocked standing roundhouse with a birdie, he's done something. About and that's right. That's a no no. And it does it does make sense in some instances because birdie standing high kick is only zero. You can three frame through it. Wait wait wait. Did they nerf that? I don't know, but it's, I know it's only zero. Jesus, it's not that plus. That used to be plus. Ah, okay. okay. I'm a, that must be a season three because uh, birdie one thing. Ah, gotcha, you, gotcha. You. Yeah, because if you ever watch the situation after standing high kick, they're both trading four frames. That's what's happening. Okay. Now, bomb out of the corner, not using all of his V trigger dash punches. Not sure why. Would have got full corner conversion. And the blow, blow hole strikes again. Oh my god. I do like that Nunch has, has figured out Nailbomb just can't react to that. Yes. He's sitting still in neutral or dash punching. He's never jumping. Did they take so. away uh, Birdie's ability to do regular, uh, that jumping man throw? I can't remember the name of it. Just regular dolphin dive? Yeah. Yeah, you can do regular. But I'm saying that he used to be able to do that, and if he jumped, he could super you every time. Oh. Did they take that away? No. Because that, that, was, that was a big thing, especially in the Capcom Cup. They were yeah. showing that, like, there are situations where you just had to die. I'm pretty sure you still can. Yeah, so if you had still had super, you dolphin dive, you just fight. And then they try to jump, you can super it. Yeah, funny. But, Hell Bomb, you don't know what you're doing. Alright, turning on the trigger. Neutral jump for some oh. reason, as if he had a DP. Oh, Hell he, he gave away his own plus. He did. Nobody wanted to block. Nobody wanted to sit still in neutral. Mm. Didn't want to wait. Wanted to keep going in. Is that winners or losers? But that was losers. So, congrats to Nail Bomb on making it to top eight. He has a lot to learn, but I know he'll go back, rewatch this figure out what he did wrong, um, and level up from there, because he's a player that gets better every single week. So we're looking at winner's finals. It's exactly what I would have expected from this tournament. 